Hey, it's Kat here to talk about Kano Maps. Now, Kano Maps are another tool that we use in Boolean for simplifying expressions, but also as a means of representing an expression. So it is a visual representation, and I'm going to start off by talking about um, how we would represent something simple using two variables like A and B. Okay, so we're going to have an expression, and it deals with A and B. Now that's two variables, and when I'm using two variables, it means that there are two to the power of two combinations, which results in four possible solutions. So let's say that we had zero and zero, that would result, well, depends on how we're combining them. Sorry, we'll just go through the combination zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. Now to represent those as a Carnot map, we have to draw a box. So four combination means four boxes that can contain values. Now we use one side to represent A and one side to represent B. Now A can either be false or true and B can either be false or true. Now that means that this first box, if it is in line with the false for B and the false for A, it means that it is false and false. Across one, uh, this next box would be false for A and true for B. The bottom one would be true for A and false for B. And for the bottom right, we would go true for both. So that's just for myself to remember what combination fits in each box. Now hopefully this is making some kind of sense to you. When I first saw it, I, I had no idea what was going on. Uh, but let's try and populate this. Okay, so over here, nice and scrappy, we had all our combinations for A and B. So if we were using the expression A and B, then it would only ever be true when they are both true, down here. Now I look for that combination in my box, and I can put a 1 there. So when they're both 1, it's 1, and I can leave all the other boxes empty. Okay, so just this one contained a value. So let's have another look at a different one, so a different expression, and after our explanation perhaps the next one will be a little bit tidier. So we're using an expression now and let's go with not A and B. So let's have a look at our Carnot map. Okay, so it's going to be a not A, which means that it's going to be in this row and so that's that bit. Now if it's going to be B, so if B is true then it's got to be in this column. So what's the one that intersects both of those? And we put a 1 in here. 1! Yay! And we leave the others empty. Okay, so let's have another look at another one. Let's say that we've got not A and not B. So we're looking for this one and this one. So not for both of them, we put a 1 in there. Okay, so basically it's about finding the thing that matches. So let's try going the other way around. Let's start with a populated Carnot map and work backwards. Okay, so here we have a Carnot map that actually has a value in it. And the idea is to combine the variables together with an AND in a way that would make them true. Okay, so you've got to combine them with an AND. So we have A is true, and we're going to have to end that with something else. So is B true or not true? It is not true, so it's A and not B. Did we do that one already, or did we do not A and B? Anyway, so that's how you go about it. So let's try one that is actually just a little bit harder, but the same way. Um, so from a populated Carnot map until an expression. Okay, here we go. Now, looking at that, um, there's not a super easy way to do it. It actually kind of looks like it's probably two expressions. So let's do this one first, and then this one. So that first one was, uh, we did it a moment ago, it was A and not B. So I'm going to put brackets around that because that's one expression by itself. 
So tick that one, and we're going to look at the next one. And the next one is not A and B. So what we do, so we've got that one. So what we do now that we've got two expressions is we all the two together. Okay, so we've got A and not B, or not A and B. Does that look common to anything else that we know? Any other um, Boolean expressions? Um, pretty sure to me that looks quite a bit like an exclusive or. Okay, so that might have been an easy way to figure it out just by seeing the pattern, but we would normally do it this way. So for each option, we try and find a pattern and then we we do the two variables, we add them together in the combination that will make it true, and then we or each of our sets of brackets together. Now let's look at something that is um, similar, but I'll show you a way of grouping the information. So I have another Carnot map that is already populated, um, and what I've got, this one actually has two values in it, and we've got we can we can circle them to see what they are. Now what the first one is is A and not B and the other one is A and B. But when I really look at it, it can be either A or B, but it is definitely A. So this one is actually simply just A and I can I can see that by grouping it together. If I had done it the long way, it would have been a and not B or A and B. Now I would have been able to simplify this using the logic laws and I'm sure I'm going to get my laws wrong but it's something like A uh, and then we put the B's together and I always forget if I take the and or if I take the or but let's go B and not B. Now that is always true so if we had B and not B is true a or true is going to be A. So again, it would have just come down to simply A. So in a moment, we're going to look at more complex Carnot maps. So we're going to look at three variable and four variable Carnot maps. That will be in the next tutorial.